Hey everybody, welcome to Sip and Sync with Azure. My name is Matt and I am joined here with my new favorite person in the world, David. Hey David, why don't you tell everybody what we're up to today? Uh, thanks for having me, Matt. I'm excited to be here. I've been lucky enough to spend a lot of time working with customers around agentic workflows. Uh, I am learning a lot and I'm also sharing what I know. And recently I had this idea of using this concept of agentic philosophers. So imagine you could take uh, the personas of Socrates, Plato, and Aristotle, mm -hmm. and bring them back to life, giving them the superpowers of agents. That's cool. I mean, I'll be honest, I don't know too much about philosophers or philosophy. So this is going to be really interesting to me and you can make them do whatever you want. And I'm going to totally believe you that it's working. But um, so fill us in a little bit in on what uh, persona is in this context. Okay. Yeah. Thank you for that question. So the concept here is that we give each agent their own persona and that really is an exercise of instruction. So when you create an agent, you're going to give it a prompt template that gives them almost like the guardrails of what it can and what it can't do. Okay. And you also give it uh, core capabilities. So if you think about things like memory, for example, um, that will be either short-term or long-term memory. Uh, think about maybe pulling back from the conversation history or maybe some kind of database where you have the whole chat session. Uh, another concept could be action. Uh, the way I like to think about action is maybe you're sending an email or opening up a ticket. Those okay. are great examples of an action. Uh, planning is interesting too. Uh, th think about maybe chain of thought or kind of breaking down a task into multiple subtasks. And finally, tool access. Uh, maybe it's calling an API. Maybe it's calling a database. Okay, cool. So it's more than just saying, all right, you're going to be a cool guy and you're going to be a boring guy. It's like defining the whole person or the whole set of uh, capabilities. Yes, you're amongst absolutely this, right. This, this agent uh, thing. <laughs> I mean, it's really hard because there's so many different terms that we have to keep straight, and they can mean different things to different people. All right, so let's start talking about our philosophers. Let's introduce them. They're yeah. going to talk to each other. This is going to be great. They're going to talk to each other, and let's break them down one by one. Mm -hmm. uh, so let's start with Socrates. Uh, what I learned through this exercise is actually Socrates never um, wrote anything down. It was all based off of memory. So for Socrates, he's more like the inquisitor, the, uh, the skeptic, if you will. Okay. So if we give him a prompt, for example, he's going to come back with even more questions. Uh, and he's going to rely on Plato, which is going to be, let's call him the scholar. Uh, Plato is going to be grounded in some kind of data. Plato is going to okay. look to the Republic, or for our case, a couple of PDF files. And so when he's prompted with information, he's going to reason over that data, which is pretty cool. Okay. And then finally, we'll have Aristotle. Now, he's going to be like our analyst. He's going to be able to make calls uh, using a web search, for example. He'll look for trends. He'll ground his data in maybe something that's more real time. OK. So Socrates is asking questions. So Socrates is like my boss. He gets a question, <laughs> is a prompt, and it's going to say, hey, I, let's get more questions. And then Plato, the second one, is going to go like over a PDF and then grab out that information and use that information. Exactly right. And our third one, I am terrible with names. Aristotle. Aristotle is going to be able to actually do a function call and call out exactly to, the, right. it, to the web, to the internet and grab information. Yes, function calls are a great, great way to extend the capabilities of an agent or an LLM, for example. Um, if you have a, your own database or your own API that you might want to call, if you're using a service like, let's say, Semantic Kernel or a library is a better way to describe it, you can use function calling to extend the capabilities of an agent or whatever unit of work you have there. That's cool. Yeah, function calls are amazing. And that it's something you don't think of that you can actually do and just make things even more powerful. Absolutely. All right. Absolutely. Cool. So let's 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 see all this. Stuff all right. Going. So let's look at some code here. And by the way, we will share um, all the content in the meeting notes. It'll have a GitHub repository for the code, and also a blog post that has oh. this kind of summarized in a more easy to read uh, manner as well. Great. So if we go to the uh, the site where we have the code, um, one thing we're going to start with are the prompt templates. When you're building agents, a really good practice is don't hard code your instructions with your code. Uh, do a separation of concerns between your prompt templates and the actual agentic code or whatever you okay. need to do for function calling or anything like that. Okay. So in this scenario, we have three different YAML files, one for each agent, and I'll just click on one of them really quickly. 
And this is a great exercise for prompt engineering. All I'm really doing here is kind of defining the persona that you were talking about. Mm -hmm. I'm kind of describing, hey, you are an agent based off of the ancient philosopher of Socrates. You ask uh, inquisitive questions, and that's really your role. Uh -huh. uh, I'm going to just go th over one more of those and talk about Plato. Now, Plato is the one that I want to ground in some kind of PDF information, like the Republic sure. or something like that. Sure. So I'm asking Plato to maybe cite some sources, uh, kind of like the on your data scenario as well. And I think right now, I'll just run you a quick example here. Um, I'll go to VS Code. Uh -huh. I'll do my .NET run, and hopefully um, our friends on the, the demo guys are with us. <laughs> so what we're going to do is we're going to prompt it with a very simple um, question. Mm -hmm. uh, and hopefully this works. It's basically going to say, you know what, how can we ensure that AI benefits all of humanity? And what I'm expecting now is Socrates to come back and kind of rephrase that question in a certain way like Socrates does. Uh -huh. And okay. so here he is coming with a whole bunch of more questions. Right. Um, Plato at this point is going to come in, he's going to try to ground it again with the PDF file that I supplied to him in that code repository. And I hope that he does cite a couple sources. So okay. he's looking at some sources here, and finally Aristotle comes in, and he's able, like I said, to do a web search, um, kind of add a little bit more data that maybe is more up to date, uh, maybe looks at trends like we were saying, and all, all that other fun stuff. At the end, we have Socrates, again, being the skeptic, the one who always asks questions, following it with even more dialogue. Okay. So at the end, does Socrates like take what Plato and Aristotle said and kind of like morph that in? It's like, so it's taking their input to it and it's saying, I'm being skeptical of what you even said to me? A little bit. So uh, when we do create an agent chat, that's an excellent question, uh, we do include history from the other agents. So based off of your question, he's able to include that in the, uh, in the prompt itself, awesome. which is awesome. That's really cool. I mean, so you could actually just have them go on forever and argue amongst themselves and you can just sit back and it's watch. It's certainly fun to watch. <laughs> uh, I would admit many times I've kind of uh, played around with those um, agent instructions and f had some fun conversations and lost many, many hours just kind of <laughs> prompt engineering my way around this. That's cool. That's really neat. All right. So what else do you have for us? Or is that pretty much we wrapped it up and our, our philosophers are sitting there arguing amongst themselves and we're watching and having fun and... So you mentioned that we have a GitHub repo, we have a blog post, we have this wonderful episode. Is there anything else? We're going to put all those in the show notes, of course, so people can uh, go out and watch them themselves. Is there any other final uh, words, of, words of wisdom I, you have I, for us? I think us? we nailed it. I think we nailed <laughs> it. So I think we'll just include that content that you mentioned. Um, we did use Semantic Kernel for this one, which is a great library using uh, Java, .NET, and um, Python. And that's really it. So... That's awesome. Great. David, I have one last question for you. What do you think Socrates would drink for his coffee? Uh, I would imagine him being a, um, a cappuccino guy. Cappuccino. Uh, yeah. Yeah, Before go, 11 a.m. I would go with latte, so here we go. Uh, oh, okay. <laughs>